Breaking the News with Des Clark. I am Des Clark and this is Breaking the News, the show that breaks the week's news and asks four opinionated panellists to put it back together again. And in the new normal, here we are back again, still taking you through the lighter side of the news, finding laughter in lockdown with all the panellists under the new guidelines in different places, detached from me physically and somewhat emotionally. Yes, we are comedians. We are used to self-isolation. And thank you for being back with us again this week. Harry and Megan have been invited to appear in The Simpsons. Harry will play himself, and Megan will play Homer's distant relative, Wallace Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's quite good, that, isn't it? A bit of the uh, royal history in that chat. Uh, people are finding more and more ways to bring a bit of normality back to life, with one couple streaming their wedding service to 100 guests via Facebook. The fight in the car park afterwards was available on pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie Minogue is planning to launch her own wine later this year. It's going to be a premium product aimed at connoisseurs. There is a much cheaper version, of course, and that's Danny Minogue. (laughs) 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 Yes, it's another special edition of Breaking the News. There's no audience, but there's still going to be plenty of laughs, as joining me are comedian Elaine Malcolmson and just returned from Adelaide, Ray Bradshaw, and facing them are broadcaster and stand-up Ashley Story and funny man Stuart Mitchell. So this is the Broken News Round, where our teams have to guess the two major stories of the week that have been mashed together into one single news headline. So, Elaine and Ray, can you tell me the first story? It's day one of lockdown. And they seem to be enjoying it, judging from all the feeds coming in on my my social media. I know lots of you have questions about this new reality we're all living under. I'm interested as to how difficult you think this should be for everybody. We've been thinking about some of the tasks we now might have to perform for ourselves. So you don't need any special equipment or anything like that? Ray, any ideas, mate? Would this be the fact that we're all in lockdown? (laughs) I mean, how did you get it? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's the news that Nationwide locked down with Prime Minister Boris Johnson announcing a series of strict new measures this past Monday night. Ray, it's happening, mate. Uh, are you coping all right so far with lockdown? Yeah, I reckon if the pubs and takeaways are still closed by June, I'll probably be a millionaire. (laughs) It's it's mad. (laughs) And what I'm really enjoying is... I've been doing my daily walk, uh, government issued, and what I'm really enjoying is seeing all the runners because you can separate the kind of ones that do it as a hobby and ones that are just out for the day like some people are in high vis under armour jackets <laughs> and other people are just running about in a Marseille top from 2003 in their <laughs> pair of Adidas Sambas <laughs> yes that, that, that's one of those tops that if you sweat in them it still smells about three years later that's old school mate <laughs> and what, what about you Elaine are you coping with lockdown now I'm, yeah I'm doing alright I find there's, there's so much advice and you can only go shopping for basic necessities but I imagine like, my basic necessities are a lot different to someone else's basic necessities, um, for example, Yotam Otolengi. Like, one man's rose harissa is another man's pan loaf. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was is, beautiful. That's amazing lockdown <laughs> philosophy. I love that. How are you coping with it, Ashley? I don't want to be all first world problem, right? But I've really struggled to get my lactose-free milk for a whole week. So I've been drinking regular people milk. And my whole family have isolated from my smell. So I don't have any pals. Listen, you're all right. Jim Smith's not here because he's taking it straight for the other. (laughs) (laughs) It's strange times. (laughs) Uh, And Stuart Mitchell, mate, how's lockdown affecting you? Well, it's not not much change for me, really, because I already sort of shop as infrequently as possible. And I actually read as well, allegedly, the virus can't survive on cardboard. Did you know that? No, this is news to me. No. Apparently it can't. Well, I don't know why we're all sitting inside when we can just be walking about with empty cereal boxes in our heads. <laughs> 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 this is great. We're looking for the advice as well. And it's weird. Lockdown just brings so many new realities for us. I'm thinking that it must be torture right now if you're a Jehovah's Witness. Because they know that... <laughs> Everybody's inside, but they can't go to the door. <laughs> People are saying they're struggling to cope with lockdown because they're being forced to stay indoors. So here's a question I've got for you. What's the longest you've been stuck in the house and why? I had actually a really, like, properly bad flu um, when I think I was about 14 or 15 and I was off school for two weeks and didn't leave the house um, for that t- the whole two weeks apart from 
we got evacuated in the middle of the night one night because of a bomb. <laughs> this is never going out. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you actually serious? And uh, I threw up over an Ulster Unionist Party councillor. <laughs> You have just heard the most Northern Ireland story of all time. <laughs> the longest, yeah. the longest. I, I didn't. This was a self keeping in. Um, on my final year of school, I decided on my last day to not have a monobrow for the first time in my entire life. So I took a razor and decided to shave in between my eyebrows. But like I overestimated the distance, and I just went full of my thermon, and I just had like. I look like an Alsatian, like I just had two dots at the far end of my head <laughs> for about three weeks and I couldn't leave the house because it was mortifying. <laughs> Who's, who? That bloody Amazon guy's back again. I, I, really hope, I really hope that's a doorbell. Whose house is that? There's a massive shortage of baby milk in the shop, so we had to get it delivered because hey. we want our child to eat. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, go take, take the delivery, mate. We, we'll listen in. No, I've just buzzed them in. It's okay. Yeah, do you want me to actually? Right, okay, let's go. Has he got yeah. any jokes? Yeah. He's welcome to join the show. Oh, he's running up the stairs. Oh. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. This is Lockdown Radio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> A delivery of baby milk during breaking the news. Uh, the good thing is it's cardboard, which uh, means I won't have coronavirus, which is nice. <laughs> it's great that Ray's still getting deliveries from sweaty strangers to the door and pretending it's baby milk. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the news of national lockdown, and it's the right answer, Elaine and Ray. Well done. You get two points for that one. So, Ashley and Stuart, over to you now. And what was the other story we were after? Uh, this is a story that Joe Wicks... Uh, is doing PE classes on YouTube every weekday. Yeah, absolutely right, yes. It's the fact that we're all doing our very best to entertain ourselves at home during the COVID-19 lockdown. Joe Wicks has had spectacular success and announced that he wants to be the nation's PE teacher and millions are logging into his daily fitness classes. I'd actually forgotten that the Joe Wicks PE classes started first thing on Monday, so I was forced to do the entire lesson in my vest and pants, which <laughs> was weird, but I still went ahead with it. What about you, Ashley? Did you watch the Joe Wicks thing? Did you... Start squatting around the house? No, because I'm not a thirsty mother. Um, everybody on my Facebook who's watching Joe Wicks is like a middle-aged, thirsty woman who's like, oh, hey, it's really good. But I had actual hot guys as my PE teachers and I still faked sciatica for three years. So, um. <laughs> Ray Bradshaw, what about you? Are you one of those that are joining the Joe Wicks revolution? No, but I was... Enjoying listening to Ashley describe um, all the people doing it as thirsty middle-aged women, because my wife's doing it. That's pretty enjoyable to uh, feedback to her. Well, here's the thing. Obviously, the exercise option is what we're being encouraged to do. But if you're not doing that, how are you keeping yourself going around the house? Well, I did, did you see the other videos, though, as well? Like, there was other celebrities doing videos, too. Mm, yeah, everyone's going like for Madonna it. Like, just, Madonna just appeared in her bath. And I thought she missed a trick there. Because what she should have done is she should have done a video with NHS consultants teaching us how to wash our hands like a surgeon. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Love it, love it. We never oh. saw it coming. We never saw it coming. <laughs> you never saw it. You never saw it. I mean, if it was an audience, the place would be erupted, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just kind of, the lockdown bit, I'm just pretending that the reason I'm not allowed to go outside is I'm about to enter Love Island. So oh. that's mainly what I'm doing and just like squat and walk about my shorts and stuff. Ray, I love, I love the idea of you going into Love Island, a ginger Scottish man exposed to the sun for eight weeks. The, wow. Yeah, they'd have to say it in you know Millport. <laughs> If Ray, if you were in Love Island, you'd be like the funny, friendly one who doesn't find love, but they keep you in because you're everybody's pal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, that was nice, but also a bit of a dig. But I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> this year, Love Island has a fair. friend zone. Here's Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Just me in the swimming pool with armbands on. <laughs> yeah, well done, Ashley and Stuart. You get two points for that. It was the mashup of lockdown and home entertainment. And at the end of that round, our teams are all square. 
Now, so much of our news is about public opinion, so for this round, we've called on two friends of the programme to give their thoughts and views on stories making the headlines. And this week, we spoke to Judith Ralston and Neil Delamere. So, Ashley and Stuart, you're up first. What story do you think Judith is on about here? It's something I don't have to do very often. For me, it's quite important to keep up standards to a certain degree, but it's always good to have one of those slightly messy days, at least once a week. I think having a bit of a routine, getting up, washing your face and giving yourself a wee squirt of something nice. And amongst what Judith was yeah. talking about, did we get any ideas that might link to a story from the week? I think she's talking about people straining to keep up their p- personal appearance, like cutting their own hair and doing their nails and makeup and that during the lockdown. You're absolutely right, yes. It's the news that we're all having to turn to home grooming and styling as trips out to the barber or hairdresser are out of bounds for the next few weeks because of the lockdown. Has your appearance gone out the window? Have you forgotten about grooming since the self-isolation? Um, my appearance went out the window when I was like 17 and I realised I looked like Hagrid and I should just embrace that. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, what about you, mate? Is the lack of uh, access to barber or hairdresser going to have an impact in your life? <laughs> <laughs> my aim is just... Right, first of all, let's not pick on me. Uh, second of all, uh, my aim is to become that much of a slob over the next six weeks or however long we're locked in that my phone doesn't do facial recognition anymore. (laughs) That's my plan. (laughs) Uh, What about this idea then of everybody trying to look decent when they're at home? The reason they're saying a lot of it is because they have to go on video calls and some people still working from home. So I'm going to ask our panel, have you got any tips styling-wise for a great look? Pick your sheets over your mirrors. It doesn't matter. It's it's we're in quarantine. Nobody cares if your eyebrows are on fleek or your weave is snatched. Just hide and then use a filter when you're having a meeting and be like a sexy cat for all your meetings. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's not really a styling tip, but I like with no thought at all did the most Northern Irish thing I've ever done, and I bought new pajamas in case I have to go into hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that because I know it's true. Yes, home grooming is the correct answer. Two points go to Ashley and Stuart. Right, Elaine and Ray, here's Neil Delamere. And what is Neil talking about here? Well, it's not something I'm concerned with because I don't have kids. It never would have worked for my mum and dad. Mum would be okay, but dad wouldn't have the patience. I, I, I think she would insist on discipline. I'd probably still have to wear a uniform. I don't know if learning the difference between the phone ringing on the telly and the phone ringing in the house is necessarily going to get me in to the university I'm looking to get into. It would make a fairly terrible version of Grange Hill, though. Uh, This will be the fact that schools are closed, so people are having to homeschool. Absolutely right. Yes, it's the reality of trying to educate your kids at home after Scotland schools closed their doors last week. What do you think? Do you think this homeschooling's going to work? No. Have you seen School of Rock? (laughs) Like that's, this is what's going to happen. Uh, but it's, it's funny though because, so I'm I'm 31, so I've got I've got a six month old son. But so all my mates, none of them have kids that are kind of uh, old enough to be at school. So it's the guys that I'm playing football with that I was messaging a couple of them to see how homeschooling is going to get on because they're idiots. So their kids are going to really struggle. <laughs> and straight away, I said, "How's homeschooling going on?" And one of them messaged me Monday about 11 o'clock to say, "I think I'm going to start an affair with the other teacher." <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Elaine? Do you think this homeschooling is going to work for the kids and the parents of Scotland? Um, well, it's a great opportunity uh, to teach children things that they don't get taught in school, like poker. <laughs> <laughs> or... I think people just have to play to their strengths and like find an educational means to everything. Like you could teach your kids about like research and and the methodology of research by letting them fact check your friend's Facebook accounts. Um, <laughs> you could have your kids learn about self promotion by watching the Kardashians. You could yes. teach them chemistry and get them to like make little gin and tonics. I don't know, man. There's a reason why my child has nine nipples and four legs and is a sausage dog. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 
But it is, it's that thing as well that parents trying to cope. This is the new normal for all of us. Parents trying to cope with it, being self-isolating, trying to teach the kids as well. If you were a teacher, what subject do you think that you'd be best at teaching? I'll come to you, Ray, on this, first of all. So, Ray, picture yourself, if you were the teacher, what subject do you think that you'd teach? I think I'd probably go home economics. and mm. um, But for all the cooking recipes, it's just... Because I mainly cook when I'm drunk. So it would just be all the mad recipes I've done over the years. So like potato waffles and cheese and onion discos. Let's try and make that together. Or like Parmesan cheese toasties or whatever. I think eh, I think it'd be good. See, this is the thing, Ray. That's the show I want to see. See this Jamie Oliver stuff with tins of finely chopped tomatoes. I want to see you getting yeah. at your cheesy discos. Yeah, you want to see me make a Monster Munch hash. That is what you want to see. <laughs> Uh, Elaine Malcolmson, if you were a teacher, what subject would you teach? Bins. Sorry? <laughs> Bins. <laughs> Bins? Bins. Bins. <laughs> How the bins work? Have you broken? What's happened? <laughs> Shouting bins. Bins. What's, what, what do you mean, bins? How the bins work? <laughs> it's really complicated. And... I think people will benefit from knowing quite early on in their lives how the bins work. Can I just say, as a public service broadcaster, can we get somebody to check on Elaine during lockdown? Because there's clearly something happening here. Uh, I, what, are we talk, what are we talking, Elaine? So would you? Would it be like what the blue bin does? Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but a blue bin's not just a blue bin... Always a blue bin because in different council areas a blue bin is like a different bin to like my blue bin. <laughs> and then there's the, the politics. Politics of bins. History of bins. Science of bins. <laughs> In many ways, <laughs> Elaine, I'm not going to lie, we all poo pooed the bin idea to start with. And now I feel yeah. like if Joe Wicks is a nation's PE teacher, you should be the nation's bin teacher. When can you start? And there is a different poo poo bin as well. There is a different That's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah, homeschooling is the right answer. Two points go to Elaine and Ray. You're tuned to Breaking the News on BBC Radio Scotland with me, Des Clark. Now, this round is all about who's in the news. I will play you a clip of a mystery person. All you have to do is tell me who it is. So, Elaine and Ray, you're up first this time. Who is this? Oh, what is she done to her hair? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I, that just sounded like one of the many voices in Ashley's head, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, Elaine, any thoughts on who that voice might belong to? Um, is it Angela Rippon? <laughs> It doesn't sound like her, but yes. No, no. Well done, Elaine. Weirdly, uh, doing a bit of a voice, that is Angela Rippon. Why are we talking Angela Rippon this week, then? Angela Rippon is currently promoting celebrity murder mystery, which is not what I thought it was. Um, and she said that... <laughs> She said that the Director General of the BBC, John Burt, told her at a party that she'd have to quit when she was 50. Um, and now she's 75 and she says, I'm still working. And where exactly is John Burt? Mm -hmm. well, I hope he's in the house like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 well, there we go. Absolutely right. Yes, it's Angela Rippon. Made the news this week after claiming she was told by a BBC boss that she would have to give up her screen career when she hit 50 to make way for a younger generation. Yeah, I was actually really confused when I read this story because I got confused between Angela Rippon and Angela Lansbury. And I was like, well, I didn't know she presented the news and was very confused for a bit, but then kind of got it. What do you think about this then, Ashley? Is this just age discrimination once more, especially against women? Well, yeah, there is a perception that men, like, when they get older, it's like a fine wine, that they get better with age. But, like, women, as they get older, are like milk and just get lumpy and smelly. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I do. I feel for. I feel for. <laughs> I was in the same room as her like a couple of months ago, and she is looking better than most twenty-year-olds I know. 
she like glows and there was a big set of stairs and I got puffed out after like one because I've got sad legs after like one flight she <laughs> dashed up them she's no well there you go yeah still fit as a fiddle and working away we love that about her a fair play to her for still working at this this age though and still earning I mean Parky for instance he's not had to do anything since he was giving away pens and adverts <laughs> The other argument as well is, especially with newsreaders, people trust them if they're a little bit older because they've got that gravitas and that life experience. Is is that what they need, life experience and gravitas? Because I think sometimes, like, as in now, what you really need is someone to really get the wind up you. (laughs) So I would support more regional accents on the news because there's going to be a different reaction to Angela Rippon telling you to stay indoors and Mary from Glasgow telling you to get yourself up the road. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray, what about yourself? Do you buy into this? The argument against what Angela Rippon was told is that we want newsreaders to be a bit older because they've got that gravitas and trust about them. i go the other way. I reckon the BBC have got it right, but I think they're saying 50. I think that's too old. I would stop it. All newsreaders can be no older than 12. Um, <laughs> just because I think it would make the news a bit more fun and also an eight-year-old could probably make more sense out of a Donald Trump press conference than we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems to be aimed at that age category most of the time anyway. Here's the thing, Angela Rippon's obviously a very successful and famous newsreader. Who is your favourite newsreader ever? Without a doubt, Trevor MacDonald. Oh, legend. I mean, classic. He's- He's done so many ITV news broadcasts. He's witnessed more bongs than Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. He's not working at the moment because obviously all McDonald's are closed for business. <laughs> 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 oh, <no. laughs> Ashley, what about yourself? Obviously, we're talking Angela Rippon, classic newsreader. Do you have a favourite newsreader? Um, the one, the only, I cannot believe she's not been mentioned in this conversation, Jackie Bird, caca. Oh, Every now time. we're talking, oh. yes. What is it about so Jackie I, Bird then do you think that stands her out from all the rest? Our flightiness, um, <laughs> our plumage. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to tell Ashley she's no an actual bird? <laughs> uh, two points go to Elaine and Ray. That was, of course, the voice of Angela Rippon. Right, Ashley and Stuart, it's your turn now. Who is this and why are they in the news? It's hot <laughs> and it is damp and sticky. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Master Chef host Greg Wallace. Because he's, he's come out and he said he's never been disappointed by a McDonald's or a KFC, but he has been by Mitchell and Starford. That's absolutely right. It is MasterChef host Greg Wallace in the news this week claiming that he has never been disappointed by a McDonald's or KFC unlike many Michelin-starred restaurants that he's visited. Uh, Although he did admit to being chucked out of his local McDonald's uh, a few times while waiting on his Big Mac shouting, Two minutes left! Two minutes! You've got two (laughs) minutes! Get it out of the oven! Plate it up! It's weird, isn't it? Because how can you never have been disappointed, particularly by McDonald's? Because I don't know about you, you order 20 nuggets, you get home and you notice they've not put the sauce in. Now, I'm not a violent person, but (laughs) that's the only ever time, (laughs) genuinely, the actual anger on my face. I'm surprised he said he's never been disappointed in a McDonald's. He's clearly never asked for a strawberry milkshake and been told the machine's not working, but you know it's just because they don't want to clean it. (laughs) (laughs) Elaine, here's a question for you. What fast food could you not live without? I'll tell you what I can live without. Mm. Burger King and their chicken fries. Posters up everywhere (laughs) for chicken fries. Ads on the telly for chicken fries, tweeting about chicken fries like they've invented the wheel with their chicken fries. It's a (laughs) goujon. That's what they've got, goujons. That's you. You've been telt, Burger King. Uh, Ray, yourself, are you a fast food fan? Is there a fast food you couldn't live without? Being Scottish, I think the quintessential Scottish fast food is the Saucy Supper, which is perfect for all occasions. Mm. So if you're drunk, you need to sober up, Saucy Supper. You're back from holiday, you want some Scottish stodge, Scottish uh, Saucy Supper. Your first communion, Saucy Supper. (laughs) Your wife's lefty and you can't stop crying, (laughs) Saucy Supper. It's, It's a versatile food. Fast food you couldn't do without Ashley. I'm a fan of the curly fry, and I really like in my Deliveroo app. You can search for specific type of food, so I will like order from a place just based off their curly fry 
size, how many I can get, how cheap they are. I don't really care how far away it is. The cyclist probably needs the exercise anyhow. Just bring me curly fries. And the fun thing about curly fries is they use less potatoes, so it's technically a healthier chip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Greg Wallace, well done to our panel, correctly identifying that. Of course, Greg Wallace has never been disappointed by McDonald's or KFC. As we all know, it's not the food you're disappointed by after eating there. It's yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Greg Wallace is the right answer. Two points go to Ashley and Stuart. So it's time now for a final quick fire round, which is all about deciphering the numbers in the news. I will read out a headline. All the teams have to do is fill in the blanks. So get ready, teams. When we run out of time, you'll hear this. John Barnes, did you have someone to kiss? So there's <laughs> there's uh, Radio Scotland's very own John Beatty that seems to be turning into Paddy McGuinness sharing the love in these times of crisis. So here we go. A couple live-streamed what to 100 people? A jigsaw. <laughs> That'd be exciting, wouldn't it? Uh, a couple live-streamed what to 100 people? An argument over what, what the blue bin is used for. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how that could have been solved if we had a teacher <laughs> of bins for the nation. A couple live streamed what to 100 people? Their argument and then they let the public vote on who was the real winner. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great entertainment, wouldn't it? A couple live streamed what to 100 people? Was it their wedding? Uh, do you know what? That is the right answer. Well done, mate. Was uh, 75 guests invited to the evening stream? <laughs> 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 right, next one, here we go What has surged by 20% over the last week? Boris Johnson singing the blue lyric Got the city on lockdown <laughs> <laughs> I can give you the answer in this one The actual answer is The internet usage has surged by 20% over the last week mm -hmm. Right, let's do one more Piers Morgan does what for the first time? Feels something <laughs> 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 Piers Morgan does his own makeup for the first time because of social distancing on Good Morning Britain. They can't use makeup artists, so there you go, a first for him. John Barnes, did you have someone to kiss? And there is the klaxon John has beated, which means the end of the quiz. And our winners this week are Ashley Story and Stuart Mitchell. Well done, oh. little applause to you. And commiserations Yay. to Elaine Malcolmson and Ray Bradshaw. Woo! Oh. And we'll leave you with the breaking the news. Breaking news, Justin. Uh, Simon Cowell thought he had COVID-19 symptoms when he was experiencing pains around his chest, but it turns out he just had his belt done up too tight. <laughs> 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 Paul Heaton and Jackie Abbott of the Beautiful South have announced that they will play a free show for NHS staff working on the front line of the coronavirus pandemic. They haven't agreed how they'll do it, as they need a little time to think it over <laughs> <laughs> and a woman from Cornwall claims to have saved her goldfish's life using the Heimlich manoeuvre however the goldfish claims to have absolutely no recollection of this event <laughs> <laughs> the news is broken I've been Des Clark goodbye